Hello everybody, today you're watching the Tropics Topics of October the 6th of 2018. Had a little bit of a low on activity, but we are back again because there are some things that could be threatening land in the near future. First off, the storm is currently tropical cyclone right now, tropical storm Leslie, currently a moderate tropical storm, 60 mile hour winds, pressure of 987 millibars. The storm has been around for, for a while and will continue to be around for probably the next week as it progresses up here in the North Atlantic. Now, but the system that we're really watching today is Invest 91L which has a very high chance of development in the next two days to five days as it approaches the Gulf of Mexico and will eventually become a threat to the Gulf Coast of the United States. We'll get into detail on both storms, but first, here's a wide shot of the Atlantic as a whole right now. Uh, you can see Leslie up here in the northern Atlantic and 91L in the Western Caribbean just north of Honduras. Uh, let's start with Leslie here. It's the one that's starting to land the least. Uh, we can see here that it's a pretty well organized storm it's been kind of going in and out of organization over the past few days it was a hurricane uh, about two days ago uh, but lost it because it was starting to lose a lot of its convective structure but now we can see it's kind of regaining it a little bit it's got quite a bit over the center and is getting pretty healthy outflow however you can still you can see that there's a lot of you know, stable air mass coming in behind it that's indicating that the waters back here are pretty cool because leslie has been generally meandering in this area for the past several days and it will continue to do so as it progresses towards the east kind of running over its own track which means that the water temperatures won't be particularly high uh, but we'll just have to wait and see on how strong Leslie exactly gets. Uh, here's the European model forecast for um, Leslie here and you can see that that it does start to take a little bit of a southeast dip. This is kind of unusual for Atlantic systems because usually when storms start to kind of move east, they kind of start having a bit more northerly component. They start to move a bit more poleward. But Leslie is doing the opposite. And that's because this trough up here that's supposed to be picking up the storm is not going to be strong enough to actually pick it up. As you can see here, it just kind of forces it more towards the south. And eventually, it does. It just kind of misses as the amplification axis kind of moves over the Azores. But we can see here another trough comes in uh, from Greenland. And this one is a lot more amplified. And as a result, Leslie starts to kind of get get felt by that, I guess, and then moves up towards the north and eventually becomes post-tropical as a result. Finally, actually, it's been this thing has been around since September 23rd, I believe. This has been a very long-lived system. So that will probably be what the, the end of Leslie is. You, you'll also note all the Gulf of Mexico activity over there. We'll get to that in just a few seconds. Uh, but first, here's the National Hurricane Center forecast for Leslie. Uh, showing, first of all, a very wide wind field, and that's something that the storm is probably going to retain over the next few days as it continues to drift towards the east, southeast, and eventually southeast. And then you can see at the very end of the, end of the run, it starts to kind of take a little bit more of a easterly, it loses more southerly components and starts to kind of move a bit more easterly. And you can see here it's also forecast to maintain tropical storm status all throughout the model. Uh, and once it curves towards the northeast, it might be a threat to the, the eastern Azores, or potentially if it gets far enough east, maybe the Canaries, maybe Portugal, but that's a very long range, and it won't be a direct impact. It'll just be from the most outer effects of Leslie. So that's uh, Leslie here. Let's get to the main story here, which is Invest 91L, located here in the Caribbean, just north of Honduras and off the coast of the Yucatan. You can see it's a pretty, still pretty broad. It doesn't really have a lot of organization, really. You can see that there is a little bit of a swirl here, uh, that's just one little transient low within the entire spectrum. You can see here in this AS ASCAT pass that was done earlier today, um, basically last night. You can see that the wind field is still pretty elongated, not much organization, not not no like 30 knot or gale force winds within this entire thing. That means that it's still relatively weak. It still has some organization to do. However, you can see that there's some convection going up, but it's also getting sheared because if we look at the water vapor imagery here, you can see that there is this upper low here centered over the Gulf of Mexico that's inducing a lot of westerly shear, northwest, you know, westerly shear over the storm. And that's kind of hindering some, any sort of convective activity from actually getting to, to blossom. And as a result, this thing isn't going to probably, this thing probably isn't going to be able to form today. And it'll probably just continue to slowly organize over the, uh, the, Western Caribbean as it progressively moves towards the north. Uh, this upper low will also move up towards the north. As you can see here, there's this big trough coming in over the western U.S., pr producing a lot of very strong southwesterly flow over Texas, which is going to be forcing this um, low here up towards the north. 
uh, over time. Uh, if we look at the models here, this is the GFS model, back it up a little bit. Uh, sorry about that. And we can see that it doesn't really get going, and by get going I mean form, until at least Sunday night once it starts to move out to towards the north into the Yucatan Channel. Uh, it becomes a tropical storm by then. And then progressively starts to move towards the north at a relatively brisk pace, uh, moving into Pensacola, uh, Florida, that general area, as probably some sort of a tropical storm, maybe minimal hurricane. We'll just have to wait and see on exactly what happens. We'll kind of go into more of the actual things that could uh, help it, you know, intensify or not later on. Uh, this is the and this is the GFS solution, uh, one of many model solutions for this, and eventually it recurves it off and goes up through the Appalachians as a result of the synoptic scenarios we'll get into in a bit. Uh, the GF and uh, the European model uh, is a little bit weaker and a little bit slower with 91L rings actually over the Yucatan, which might be why it, it takes a little longer to develop. That's a becomes a tropical storm by Monday evening. And then moves it up towards the north, and doesn't, and it doesn't make landfall until Thursday, pretty close to Pensacola again. And then eventually we'll start to kind of, because it's slower, it will kind of get caught underneath more of this general troughing, and it won't be able to really get going because there's also you know, ridging out here. So it, it kind of starts to kind of doesn't really go anywhere. Instead, it just kind of progresses eastward. And then the model actually dissipates it over Florida, and that's the end of that. So what's going on here exactly? So I'll, I'll kind of use the GFS um, initialization to kind of show what's going on. So this is right now. You see we have this big ridge out here centered over the Carolinas, and then we also have a pretty big trough axis coming in over the southwestern U.S. And this is going to eventually <clears throat> progress towards the east a little bit, dip into more into Arizona and Mexico, and as our tropical system up here in 91L comes up, we're eventually going to see that this trough axis over here is going to be producing a lot of northerly flow, which is going to be allowing 91L, or whatever it is by this time, it could be a tropical storm, and, and we'll be forcing it up into the floor panhandle generally is what the models are saying at this point, but these are just, these are just the two main global models. And in this run, it does show it moving up into these uh, into Pensacola on Wednesday morning. You can see that's also being assisted with northerly flow here from this ridge that's being slowly pushed towards the east because of this trough moving in, and it's centered more bet between the Outer Banks and Bermuda. And as a result, this kind of becomes a bit more a bit more tilted in a different way. Um, it becomes a bit more, you know. I guess positively tilted, and then that kind of forces it to go up the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, we can also see at the end of the line this is um, a storm moving in towards the Baja California. That's Hurricane Sergio, currently a Cat Three, in the Eastern Pacific, but not a, current, not a threat to land within the immediate future. And that eventually may bring some moisture up into you know Texas, Oklahoma, uh, New Mexico, Arizona, this general region of the country eventually. Uh, but this will be after 91L moves through uh, the Gulf Coast. Uh, this is the current uh, model guidance right now as of 12 as of 12 Z. This is of this morning and you can see that a lot of them are beginning to cluster a bit further east of Pensacola. The GFS and the European were really the only two that made it moving into the that made it moving into this area. But the European solution was also as of Z, 0 Z from yesterday. So we'll be getting a new run this afternoon and we'll see how that one has changed. Uh, but, but yeah, we can generally see that this is going to, that models want to move basically somewhere between Destin and Apalachicola as a, as we can see here, as probably a strong tropical storm. Uh, ignore this model right here, that's statistical. And uh, probably is a tr strong tropical storm, but there are some outliers here, notably the HWRF right here, which does bring it to a category three. However, I do not believe this is going to be the actual outcome. This is a, as you can see here, this is a pretty big outlier. So I do not see this coming in as anything more than a Category 1 hurricane at this time. However, this could change. So you need to keep in track with what the local officials are saying regarding the forecast to 91L. And 91L, and 91L could be, it could be anything from a weak tropical storm to borderline Cat 1, Cat 2 hurricane. We don't exactly know how strong it will be at this point because it's still 
about four to five days out from actually impacting. That might not sound like a lot, but for a storm that hasn't formed yet, it basically bolsters the amount of time that we actually have to actually observe what this thing is going to do. So just keep in tabs with your local officials if you do live in along the, the Gulf Coast from basic anywhere from Louisiana to you know the Gulf Coast of Florida. Just just keep in tabs with local officials. You know, have your hurricane plan ready just in case this thing comes your way. It's always helpful to have that ready. Um, and you know, you, you saw what hurricanes have done so far this year, Florence and North Carolina. That was devastating. Not saying this thing is going to be anything like Florence uh, per se, but also note that flesh, fresh water flooding could be also pretty significant in this portion of the country. Uh, I don't exactly have the WPC graphic up, but rainfall could be quite tremendous in this area. So do be ready for anything that may come your way associated with 91L. And if 91L does gain a name, it would gain the M name, Michael. Uh, so it would be named Michael if it does approach the Gulf of Mexico. All right, that's it for today. I'll continue to update you on 91L or whatever it becomes over the next few days. Again, Leslie just going to meander out here over the North Atlantic and then shoot up, and then shoot off towards the east southeast and then eventually towards the north over the next week or so. Uh, it is October, so we are getting a little bit. We 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 are past the peak of hurricane season, but that still doesn't mean we can't see any tropical activity throughout the United States, as we can see here with 91L on October the sixth. So. Remember, hurricane season goes until November 30th, so just continue to be mindful of the tropics as there could be something that could be coming towards your way and without without much regard. And yeah, that's basically it for today. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to stay weather alert during this time.